Yes, yes, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the show. Once again, it's your boy Emilio Wegbar. And I would like to say thank you to each and every one of you for taking the time out of your busy schedule to tune into tonight's presentation as EJP Entertainer presents the artist spotlight. You already know what it is. We at the point of our show where we are joined by tonight's special guest. But before we do so, ladies and gentlemen, please make sure you go follow us on IG at EJP underscore entertainment to stay up to date with everything related to EJP entertainment. Yes, yes, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the show. Once again, it's your boy Emilio Wackball, and I want to say thank you to each and every one of you out there who took the time out of your busy schedule to come up here and rock out with us again on another episode of this platform. And if you haven't done so yet, I'm asking you right now to stop what you're doing, hold up for a second, and head on over to your favorite social media platform, whether that be social No, not social media, but whether that be Instagram, where you can follow us at EJP underscore entertainment, or you can hit me up on my personal Twitter page on Twitter at the Emilio Wackball, folks. And with that being said, we are now at the point of our show where we are joined by tonight's special guest. And once again, man, we got the bean back in the building, yo. We got Boston in the building once again. And please, if you are not doing anything else, help me welcome right now to the show my man Jay Fur. Yo, Jay, what's good? Good, brother how's everything yo Amilo what up everything's good over here how you doing I'm chilling man I'm chilling man thank you for you know taking the time out to come up here to this platform to rock out with us and all that good stuff man it's a pleasure to have you yeah thank you for having me on man I appreciate it you're absolutely Hell welcome yeah man. I'm mad pumped <laughs> I'm glad yeah. you are but you know what man Honestly, man, this interview shouldn't even go no further. You know why? And I'm going to tell you why. You know why? What's up? Because you got on that bum-ass Red Sox jersey and your po- your photo that you sent to me and all that stuff. Hey, yo. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. Oh, we got a little we got a little tension over here. Nah, ain't no tension at all. Tension. Ain't no tension nah, at no, all. Nah, we chilling, bro. <laughs> nah, you nah. don't. Yo, as, as a yo, as a Red Sox lucky. and Yankee fan and all that good stuff like that, you know we gotta show, you, you know, know trade jabs and all that shit. <laughs> <laughs> yo, I might I might have gave you that picture on purpose, maybe. Ah, ah maybe. so now it comes out now you know that you did saying? this. It was all a planned event. You did this on purpose. You never huh? know with me. <laughs> <laughs> I always got the tricks up my sleeve, my dude. I hear that. But nah, we always got love for Boston artists, man. We definitely are welcoming you here. We definitely are pleased to have you, man. And we looking forward to this conversation, man. It's been one that's been in the works, man. So we finally got you here on this platform. And with that being said, you know, we normally like to give our guests the opportunity at the beginning, you know, to tell a little bit of themselves to the audience out there that's listening right now. So, man, if you would like to, man, the floor is all yours, man. Take it away. All right, appreciate that. Um, I go by the name Jay Fur, J Dash F E Double R, from Massachusetts, rap, hip hop artist. I've been surrounded by music my whole life. Um, my dad playing music, plays guitar, he's got a band, um, all of that. I've been writing rap since I was 11 years old. Mm-hmm. Now I'm 24, so took me all the way through middle school writing raps every day, nonstop after school doing little rap battles with my friends as jokes but little little did they know in my head i was like no this is like serious for me you know what i'm saying like i always had that the dream like ever since i was like 11 um inspired by lil wayne he's the one that really got me into rapping and i'm writing especially and um i'm really just all about the lyrics and um cadence and just making something different that's not your typical um sound nowadays like you know what the typical sound is now so i'm just trying to be something different and start something on my own especially out of a small town that i come from halifax massachusetts um very small town the south shore it's not too much going on down there but i'm trying to be something that's going on so and i've been trying to do that for a while now and uh i've only been getting bigger and bigger so this is uh much appreciated having me on and introduced me to new york 
No doubt about that, man. And we definitely appreciate you too. So, like, with that being said, man, I have a question to ask you right off the bat. Now, when it comes to Boston, you know, a lot of people think Boston is a big city. And when it comes to like a lot of, you know, like the little towns and areas around Boston, are they still considered uh-huh. like part of Boston? Is it almost like Atlanta, how you got Atlanta, then you got so many other like little areas mm-hmm. around that they all classify as Atlanta? Um, well, the Boston area, kind of, I mean, I can't necessarily speak on that too much because I'm from the South Shore, Boston's up in the North Shore, so like, so like Boston, you think of like Roxbury, Cambridge, Mattapan, um, you know, uh, Dorchester, all the, all of that is kind of the Boston area. Okay. I'm more representing the state itself, Massachusetts. Because I'm coming from South Shore, you know, but everyone always throws when people here in Massachusetts, they instantly just go to Boston. Mm. But, you know, with the town we have out here and what we're trying to do in mass, I think that's going to change within the next few years. People aren't just going to be saying Boston. Cause not everyone is actually from Boston. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not a city boy. Like, I didn't grow up in Boston. I grew up in, like, basically the woods. Like, okay. I'm all the way down the woods. You know what I mean? So it's a lot different. And I'm sure a lot of people that are going to listen to this from Boston and stuff are going to understand exactly what I'm saying. Um, It's definitely a different dynamic, but I think the Boston scene can be chopped up in a few different cities surrounding. But um, where I'm from, I I wouldn't claim myself as like a Boston boy, but definitely mass, of course. You know what I'm saying? I definitely understand that. That's kind of almost like, you know, New York and New Jersey back in the days where, you know, a lot of artists that was coming from out of Jersey was thrown into the mix with New York artists. And it's the same thing almost like, you know, I brought up the comparison earlier with Atlanta where, you know, you have a lot of artists from like other surrounding areas like College Park and those areas like that. But they all get construed as, you know, Atlanta based artists. So I definitely understand that, you know, and and it's a crazy dynamic because like you said, like when it comes down to it the first thing you think about when you think about massachusetts is boston so you know it's very understandable to want to create that distinction between hometowns and stuff like that so i respect that yeah of course yeah and like that exactly what you're saying with like new york because i know it's like oh he's from the bronx so he's from here no he's from you know it's all it's kind of the same thing almost just here you know Mm -hmm. It's, it's kind of the same thing for the boston the different cities surrounding Boston, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, um, it's definitely, uh, it's, it's something that people like, like if you're like, I'm from Mass, but you're from New York, like people in New York only say that about the other New York rappers. Oh no, he ain't from there. He's from there. Mm-hmm. Like people in Mass do that too. But, but when you're not from there, like they just like roll with it. Like, oh, he's from Boston. All right, cool. You oh, know? Okay. I definitely understand that one, man. So, you know, another thing you pointed out earlier, you know, you said your father was a guitar player and all that good stuff, too. He still playing guitar? Oh, yeah. He's got a band and everything, like full studio band. They've been doing shit. They actually did a few shows in New York. In New York, sorry. Um, Yeah, they did a few shows in New York. They've been doing shows all over Mass. Um, Yeah, he's been doing good. He's been playing music forever. He plays guitar, bass. Um, he can play a little bit of drums, but he's he's usually guitar based. So I grew up every like be like eight in the morning waking up, and it's like my dad's already got the amp on playing. So <laughs> like yeah, like I there was there's never not a moment in my house I grew up in there wasn't music playing somehow. So I and my sister my sister also plays uh, multiple instruments, sings a little bit all that stuff so i was just like i tried to play guitar too when i was back in fifth grade but i i didn't i i didn't have the patience because that that takes a lot of patience um but i but once writing came to me um when i turned 11 going into middle school it just like i didn't stop you know i'm like it, i was just fully in love addicted like it didn't it wasn't like work it was something i enjoyed doing and still to this day almost 13 years later i'm making it happen so 
Mm, I respect that. And the reason why I asked you that question, because I'm like, yo, just off the bat right there, other than the fact that, you know, we both like sports for one, you know, we got something in common is also, you know, it's being that, you know, your, your dad plays a guitar. My dad was playing guitar. I started to try to play guitar at one point, but didn't have the patience for it. So I tried to do the drums, didn't have the yeah. patience for that. <laughs> so I went ahead and just tried, you know, my exactly, hand at being an artist. And then I was like, you know what, fuck that. Let me go on over here to, you know, doing what yeah. I do on the radio and stuff like that. And I kind of think I found my niche. I think I found what works for me, you know, that good stuff. So. That's what's up. Oh, man. definitely, definitely, bro. Yeah, man. Exactly. I'm glad we could relate on that, bro. <laughs> Word. That's cool. Word. So with that being said, you know, with all of that, you know, musical experience that just runs in your family, you know, between you, your father and your sister and other members of your family, I'm sure that also participates in music as well. How has that helped you to transition your own self into pursuing your own career in the music industry? Because I also see, you know, that around the age of 16 and 17, you started recording releasing and mixing your own music and for most of us at that age we're not even thinking about getting that technical when it comes to you know music production the main thing we want to do we want to be the stars we want to be the ones in the booth and spitting the 16s exactly. you know that stuff like that and getting notarized for you know what we do <laughs> lyrically so how has that helped you um it helped me majorly um so my parents are the ones that bought me my mic when i was like 15 or 16 on my birthday or whatever right and then my dad got me um, one of the singer of his band, like, cause he would record himself too. Like on, it was, uh, it's a, a recording program called Cakewalk. It's kind of old. It's like old, like. Oh yeah, I remember stuff, Cakewalk. That's been in the, yeah, yep. Yeah. So that's what I learned on, like at 16, 17, back in, you know, 2015, 2014 area. That's what I was working on. I taught myself it. Because I asked my dad, I was like, so how do I do it? He's like, I don't know. You got to teach yourself. That's what my friend Robbie did as a singer. So, mm. you know, I had to teach myself over, like, it took a while. And, like, still, when I started putting, like, because when I was, the reason why I started that early, technically, mm. is because I couldn't wait any longer, you know? It was such, like, I've, I've been writing since 11, dreaming of doing this. Like, I was dreaming of being that, like, high school rapper that everybody knows you know that like is actually good not just a kid putting out stuff trying to rap like mm -hmm. i was trying to show people that i could rap and i did that by freestyling and coming up at parties like every party people like yo freestyle freestyle once they all knew i could you know what i'm saying because mm -hmm. it was kind of a secret i kept in the dark until i knew i was ready to show people mm -hmm. which is around 16 or 17 years old that's when I started recording and mixing it, releasing it myself. Now looking back, the quality wasn't great at all, but my lyric, like everything else was good, but my delivery and my quality wasn't there because, you know, I was young just learning. It's all, <laughs> excuse me. Yeah. I'm sorry about that. No, you but yeah, it was all just a, it was all a learning process, really. Um, and I just, I was taking my time on it in the shadows, like growing up. And then I felt it was time and um, looking back, like I kind of wished my quality was a lot better when I first started, because I think I would have got off to even a hotter start. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't regret anything. I had to start when I started and um, just doing it at my own, like on my own in my room, at my house or down in the basement or whatever it was, practicing nonstop writing. I had to do that. Like I didn't have the money to go to a big studio, you know? Mm -hmm. And I didn't know anybody that could mix music. Like, no one I knew, like, back then, I didn't know anyone that was doing music besides myself. And that was a secret that I was keeping, you know? Mm -hmm. So, um, but that was definitely, I was inspired by them all doing it. Like, it, it just made me feel comfortable. Like, I kind of was always taught to, like, not be a follower and not try to be like everybody else. Um, and that's one thing that stuck with me growing up. And I was like, you know, because I, I played ba basketball, baseball, I was good, but like, I wasn't the best at it, you know? Right. Like, there's always people better than me. So music was that thing for me. I'm like, nobody I know can touch me doing this stuff. I'm like, I no, no one I know could even do what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. So that's where, it, that, that was the motivation and the inspiration, like, to be different. But not only that, but to be confident in myself and really enjoy something and be something that I want to be. Not try to be the best basketball player that I'm not. Or try to be the best 
baseball player that I'm not. There are already a bunch of heads better than me. But with the music stuff, I'm like, no one, no one I know is doing this. So that's what really uh, got me the motivation and inspiration. I respect that one. So you were sort of like the kid in class that could do a backflip and nobody else could do a backflip. And everybody was drawn to that because they wouldn't to see you do it being that they couldn't do it. No, no, I was kind of the opposite. I wanted to be that kid. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I was, I was shy when I was younger. I was really shy. What like kind of self-conscious about not not about any like with my looks or anything like that. Just like self-conscious and like, oh, like like for sports. So that's why I use sports as an example. That's what I immediately think of. Like, okay. like. I was like I was an all-star player but I was like the B team all-star not the A team sometimes I was but you know what I'm saying like I wanted to be something that like no one else no one else can be better than me at and I knew with my skill set at such a young age I was like I can I think this is that thing for me okay I got you you know it was crazy because I heard a funny story about you you know listening to one of your interviews not that long ago and I heard you said like you were so determined at one point you know you had also brought up the fact that you know you were so determined to get your music out there and write and just so destined to pursue this dream of you know being an artist and realizing your dream that one night you was in the shower and you were actually like took 45 minutes <laughs> <laughs> In the shower because yo, you were so yo. you were so determined to you know yep. memorize a record, yes. man. <laughs> bro. No, so that story, yeah, that's the first time I ever wrote a rap, and from there it never stopped. Mm. I was in the shower, and Lil Lil Wayne, We Steady Mob, and that verse was just stuck in my head, and I was just like, I noticed that I started putting rhyme schemes together in my head a lot because mm -hmm. I was just like really obsessed with all the music, and I was like, I like. I want to make something like that. Like, I want to be that. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And um, and I just fell in love with it right there. But I was in the shower, right? Mm -hmm. And then I text my uh, middle school girlfriend at the time when I got it. Like, I didn't get out of the shower until I memorized that verse. Like you said, the 45 minutes. Yeah, I was in there <laughs> trying to memorize that verse. Mem memorize it, memorize it. So when I got out, I could write it down. It was like an eight bars. Like, it wasn't like even a full 16. But mm -hmm. And then I sent it to my uh, girlfriend at the time. And she was like, whose song is that? And then I'm like, no way. And I was like, Lil Wayne. She goes, oh, that seems really good. I just, what, like, I never heard of it. What song is it? And then I was like, just kidding. That was me. <laughs> <laughs> and then from there, that's where I, you, that's where I got the confidence. I'm like, she literally thinks it's a Lil Wayne song. But I'm an 11 year old little white boy writing raps in the woods at his house you know what i mean like <laughs> it's like that's where i knew that's where i knew that um that like just from there i was like that's it this is what i'm doing and i never stopped mm -hmm. so. now let me ask you did your parents put you in that headlock for being in the shower for that long because i'm pretty sure you was holding the bathroom up and i'm pretty <laughs> sure they was like yo get your ass out this bathroom before we fuck you up <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm with you. <laughs> Yo, luckily not. Luckily yeah. not. I think I think my dad's amp. I think my dad's amp was so loud downstairs. They didn't even know what was going on. Oh, so okay. We were chilling. Oh, so y'all was both off in y'all own little <laughs> world <did>. anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Everyone was out in their own little world, so that was cool. Thank God. Nah, I luckily, could dig that. <laughs> I could definitely dig that. But hey, it worked <laughs> out though, because look where you at right now. You know, over that time from the time of eleven. Yeah. You know, going to high school and everything like that, you know, to once people discovered, your, you know, your talent as an artist and being able to display that talent in various showcases where you was actually headlining and selling out shows that you was doing. It, it worked out for you, man. So, like, yeah, with that bro. being said, man, like, with your father playing guitar and, you know, having his own band and everything, what steered you away from pursuing that? particular you know genre of music that your father was doing and wanting to pursue your career as a hip-hop artist you know mostly you know a lot of us young men we grow up and we kind of idolize our dads that's the first you know man we normally idolize in our lives so like what caused you to want to go in that direction um i just wanted to not not like i love rock music because that's what he's a rock, has a rock band it's all rock obviously um but i love rock music obviously i listened to it my whole life and but also when you grow up you know when you like you're becoming a teenager you're not doing you know you're kind of almost rebelling mm -hmm. you're like 
kind of going against the grain that you were coming from on certain things. And also, like rap music, you know how popular it just it got over the 2000s. Mm-hmm. So by the time I was 11 or 12, that's when it became like it really was the most popular thing. Mm. And um, so I had no choice but, you know, listen, Lil Wayne, Eminem, um, Snoop Dogg, 50 Cent, like all them. So and it just came to me naturally. And I knew I couldn't play an instrument. I already tried that. So I'm like... But then the writing just came so naturally to me Mm -hmm. that I had no other choice. You know, I just fell in love with it. Not that I'm opposed to doing different genres in the future, Mm -hmm. but, um, and I I don't, I'm not necessarily a singer. I I don't necessarily hit melodies all like that. But, um, so I just kind of know I'm a rapper. I know my lane and, um, it's nothing really to do with what, you know, my parents did or what they didn't do. I'm kind of my own person and, um, was taught to kind of steer my own ship so i appreciate that mm, i so, respect that right there that's a good answer that, no doubt so like with that you know getting back a little bit now we already covered the fact that you know you started with you know doing showcases and headlining your shows and selling out your shows now let me ask you was your first song that you put out called the entity did that come as a result of you know nope. being able to do these shows or did that come the shows come as a result of the songs you was putting out the shows came as a, the results i was uh putting out and no the song wasn't called the entity the it entry, was called I'm the entry say, yeah my fault I'm, i looked at it yeah my paper my fault yeah the entry. no you're good you're good bro you're All good right. Yeah, the entry. And um, yeah, so how that came about. So and the reason why I called it the entry, that was my entry to like releasing music, to like coming in the game mm-hmm. type of thing. Kind of corny back then, right? <laughs> um, but like, no, I really was. And I look back on it. But no, that's the thing that got everyone like that got stuck. Like it got my name in everyone's head because like the chorus and everything. Um, that chorus, like everyone, like I remember walking through the hallways, yo, Japer, yo, y'all been waiting on me, whatever, because like that's how the chorus went, y'all been waiting on me, mm-hmm. uh, just to kill this beat, uh, Japer, mother, that's me, this is now an entry of a hot MC, mm-hmm. and then like that's how it went, and um, and that, yeah, that song was the first, like I recorded that, mixed that all myself, released it. I had um, one of the local kids I knew uh, come and shoot a music video, but uh, that music video is absolutely uh, not up to par to the standards, so that is no longer on YouTube anymore. But that 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 whole that song is really what got me started with my local fan base and um, just kicked it off the right way. And I planned it out well too. I remember I dropped it the day before school started my senior year, mm. so that first day that's everyone was already thinking about like you know like you know when they see me in school they're gonna be thinking about that and um oh yeah it turned into all sorts of things other kids in the school trying to rap all of a sudden all the other kids in the school trying to rap trying to make like this is about me and all sorts of stuff and (laughs) then no no there was there was like two or three of them it was actually quite comical and then I had other kids like, yo, how do you, like, can you, like, teach me, like, how to write? Like, how to, I'm like, bro, you can't be taught this stuff. Like, this is all come natural. Like, I didn't ask anybody to teach me, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, so I'm, like, big on that. Like, because I, I understand, like, trying to help artists and, like, give them advice. But I can't teach you. Like, you, you can lead a horse to water. You can't make him drink it. It's the exact same thing. Yeah, that's definitely so, true. So, um, but... Yeah, so that's like that's how it started, and it just rolled from there. And then I was dropping songs like every week or every two weeks in my senior year, and then that's when the shows started to come in, like mm. four months in, and then uh, yeah. Now, at that age in high school, was you the one that was booking your shows and putting these showcases together, or was something like a school talent um, show, and you just happened to be headlining? No, uh, yeah, we were, me and my uh, homies were booking the shows um, after, so how it first started, uh, my first show ever, which is one of the greatest shows, I'll never forget it, um, I put a lot of time in rehearsal and everything, because my dad also has a rehearsal studio downstairs for his own music, Mm -hmm. so luckily I had the uh, privilege to use that to rehearse also at my own house for my show. My I was opening for um, Screwface Gene. Um, he's now a, actually a huge YouTuber. 
Like he's had like a reactor and um and he's still a rapper too. He's got songs with Tech Nine, um a lot of big names and oh, stuff. Wow. He's a really good oh yeah, he's a really good dude and um he's from Nebraska and uh he uh he hit me up and want like wanted me to open for him or whatever, like, because he was coming to Boston and, like, uh, like he didn't have that big of a following in Boston. So, you know, he had some openers that are from Boston, you know, to open up, get some fans there, and he's the headliner. So that was my first show. But how that ended up turning out, I was one of the only ones that... I was basically the only one that sold tickets, and it was all my people there. It was, like, 50, 60 heads there. Small venue, too. Uh, it was called The Spot in Boston. Um... I don't know if that venue is still there anymore. I know it's a part of a college um, community or whatever a school there. But yeah, no, that that like that was my first show. I was the opener. I was basically I turned into the headline. You know, I had I was the top opener, and then after that, Screw saw me and how well I was doing on stage, and like that was my first show ever. And he like came up to me like after I was finished. He goes, "Yo, you're coming back on stage with me." So I I went on his set and I was basically his hype guy, you know, keeping the people involved and uh, all my fans and uh, friends, family, etc. So that was really a dope experience. I remember after that show, this is another inspiration. Shout out Screw for this. We're gonna do another show soon, nice. but um, he 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 came up and told me. He said, "Bro," like he whispered in my ears, "Like, bro, like after tonight, he's like, it's my first time meeting you, but like you're really meant for this shit, bro. Like, don't stop, like." I want to take you on tour with me for the next tour, which I was like, hell yeah, like I'm down. But then it's like, oh, you got to have the money for it. And I was <laughs> still in school and I had no, bro, I had like $20 to my name that was going to get spent on something I was smoking or whatever. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I, but yeah, it was, it was a dope opportunity and it really just took off from that first show. And then I started, you know, then I opened up for Kyle Bent in Somerville. Um, I don't know if you ever heard of Kyle Ben. He's a pretty big uh, artist at a mask too. The name's familiar. And then I opened. Yeah, yeah. He's worked with some dope people. He's really good. Um, he's kind of quiet nowadays. I don't know what he's necessarily up to now, but um, yeah. Then I did a few other shows. Then I started. Then I had my own. Oh yeah. After that. Oh yeah. Sorry, missed this part of the story. Mm -hmm. the, after the first show, that same venue came up to me and wanted to sign me to headline my own in April. So the, sh this sh the original first show was in February. And then they had me sign for my headliner in April that night. Mm -hmm. So like, yeah, that was a big thing for me. And then, then I headlined in April and did more shows over the few years. And then I took a break and then COVID hit and then there was no concerts for three years and here we are, so. Mm -hmm. So now after the COVID pandemic has, you know, passed and everything, and it seems like everybody is starting to get more and more comfortable being back amongst people again. What do you see yourself doing now? Like, you know, I see here that you're working on your debut album, which is set to release sometime in 2023. So with that being said, with, you know, being that you're able to get back around and get out here and perform now, like, what are you looking forward to doing in 2023 other than just dropping your debut album? Um, 2023 is going to be my biggest year ever. Mm -hmm. So that's my outlook on it. Um, and I know a lot of people say that, but the way things are going, that's why I'm getting my momentum already rolling right now. Um, at the end of 2022, album coming 2023. Then after that, it's more, um, interviews, um, radio, like trying to get my song out there on the radio and other places as well. Um, I definitely want to do a lot of shows or more shows. I, I want to get back out there, but um, I got to get back on my, uh, well, first the album has to drop. I got to get my set list down and get those songs down and then I'll be ready to go, man. Like, I, I can't wait to perform again. Like, there's no better feeling than performing and uh, even people that, like, having people you know that, like, fuck with you there and love you is awesome, but there's no better feeling than having the random like the people that don't know you loving you by the end of your set you know what i mean so definitely and like then like jamming out to it some of them some of them even jamming out harder to it than the people that know you and i learned that a lot too like the world's bigger than the world that you think you're in 
Um, That's true. And I'm from such a small, I'm, I'm from such a small town, and um, you know, I've dealt with, you know, like the, do they, do they still rock with me? Like, do these people still rock with me? Do they not? And um, and you know what I just learned is like, why even like worry about that they'll see me what i'm doing no matter what because the world is watching i want the world watching not just my town you know i respect so that. like there's other people there's other people and other fans to be made and other connections to be made and uh i'm just trying to grow so that's really it no doubt now let me ask you because you bring up a very interesting you know conversation now with that being said you know about the whole hometown support and also all the other things as far as like you know wanting the world to watch you one of the biggest things and one of the biggest hang-ups right now that i see a lot and hear a lot when i have conversations with artists or if i'm online and happen to be scrolling through you know social media or looking in other places or even on youtube one of the biggest things right now that is that you know artists seem to struggle with is the support factor you know a lot of people feel more comfortable or feel as though they should be supported more so at home than on a larger stage now do you feel as though like the support at home or should i say like do you feel like you get more support at home or do you feel like you get more support from outside of your hometown Ooh, that's a tough one man mm -hmm. um because and i say that's a tough one because i do have all my you know i know who for the most part I know who fucks with me and who doesn't from my hometown, mm -hmm. which is cool. Most of them do. All, like, you know, like most of, like 90%, you know, but then there's that 10%, but you can't pay attention to that 10%, that they're not there for you. That's what the world's for, you know what I'm saying? Sure. So, but um, I was thinking, I was, like, I really think, Wait, can you repeat? How, what was the question again? Sorry, I, I just want to like answer it oh, the no, right no, way because no, I had more to say on it. No, I was asking like you know, with that being said, you know, the biggest issue that a lot of artists are having a trouble with, you know, coming to grips with, is the lack of support that they receive from the people within their communities and their hometown. Now, with you, oh, do you yeah, feel like yeah, yeah. yeah? Do you feel like more of your support comes from your home base, or do you feel like you get more support from outside of your your town in Massachusetts? So I think how it works for a lot of people, especially in my position right now, mm -hmm. um, where I am in my career at the moment, I think when you first start, everyone's rooting for you, everyone's there for you. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, then after so long, I think if some of some or maybe more than some fall off, mm -hmm. and then you can't just. And I've been I've dealt with the, I've been dealing with this too, where I feel like some of these people aren't on my board anymore, mm -hmm. which is cool, that's fine, because they'll be back on board soon with what I'm about to do if they're watching. But you know what I think a big part of that is, not getting support in their uh, own community, mm -hmm. is jealousy. Yeah. Jealousy is a big thing, because they know you. So then they're like, oh, like, he, he doesn't really have this, he doesn't do that, but see, that's what's different with me, I don't say anything or talk like, something i'm not i don't try to be something i'm not i'm me you either like me or hate me but you're probably gonna like me which is cool <laughs> but um yeah dude it's a uh, i think jealousy is a big thing with certain people and they are envy you know they don't want to see you win because they're they ain't winning so i think that's a big thing in local communities and especially small areas yeah. that aren't like especially my area that i come from love Halifax, love everybody there, love Silver Lake, y'all know who you are, but um, I think that there's a lot of people that are hating and jealous, and not only that, they just don't have much going for themselves, so, and they don't think anyone from our town has a lot going for themselves, or, you know, they've never really seen it, and they're not used to that, so um, I think it's time for me to shake it up a bit, and, uh, well, it's been time, but People still don't like to see it, but they've been seeing it. So whether they like it or not, they're watching. Mm. I like that. I like the way you put that. And the reason why I ask is because, you know, I come from the era where, you know, a lot of people, you know, especially early on in the music industry, especially in hip hop, you know, artists that didn't have their hometown behind them at first really didn't, you know, really didn't have a chance 
to be successful in the music industry and mm. a lot of that had to come from you know the fact that you know social media wasn't very prevalent at that time so you know people that was from the east coast wasn't really known on the west coast and vice versa in other areas around the markets in hip-hop right. but now that we have social media right. and we have all these different tools and places that you can get reach and get exposure you know now you're seeing a lot of people is looking for people outside of your you know your hometown and you know a lot of people are not really paying attention to the homegrown artists because they have access to so many artists from practically around the globe so you know not only with the you know the jealousy factor that comes into it also with the people that are in the same industry as you and doing the same thing you're doing they don't want to it's mm -hmm. like the saying goes you don't want to see a thief with a bigger bag to use that analogy but you also have a lot of yeah. people out there that don't want to see an artist that they feel as though that they're better than or they feel as though that they got more appeal than <laughs> they don't want to see them succeed so you Yo, know a lot of that comes into play too that's so no that 100 percent, bro 100 percent. you just said it perfectly because that too not like i've even experienced that like my own personal feelings like not gonna obviously name drop anybody not that I, like i'm jealous or anything but you still get that competitiveness as an artist where it's like this kid or like this whoever so-and-so is not like what like how is he getting all this buzz like what is he even like do you are you guys hearing what i'm hearing like you know so but that's all comes with the game um that that goes with anything to business sports other like different talent different talent talent outlets like you know like it, it's everything everything in life is all very similar in comparison so um definitely not something to trip about but it yeah like artists getting artists looking at each other is definitely a big thing because i look at other artists too but i'm always trying to support them now like you know like yeah you might have that competitive edge but still support and i think a lot of artists are doing that now which is cool and i've been trying to make connects going back to what you said like you got to start at home mm -hmm. you got to get your fan base at home and then you got to go bigger and bigger and bigger and i think that's what i'm doing right now and i'm on the um i'm on my stage of really uh getting my name completely out there in mass and branching outwards at the same time so you more so uh, the type of artist that like to go the grassroots route when it comes to building your mm -hmm. legacy in your career oh yeah yeah i definitely like i'm i know I'm already known in mass, but not to my the extent that I need to be. You know, I'm not I'm not anything yet in, in my mind. Like I just keep saying, like it's the beginning of the beginning, and it's only gonna keep going. The more I grow, it's just gonna keep being that, and I'm completely cool with that. And you gotta, you know, you gotta be patient. You can't get down. I've never thought about giving up music or um or like stopping. Like that's just like that's not even in my mind ever hasn't been since i was 11. all it's been is go 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 you got this like and it's all just out of love for the music so now at this point what would you say is most important to you as an artist the popularity or just having people being able to resonate with your music um i think definitely people resonating with my music of course um that's the main thing i just like people with my music i want people to not only one enjoy it mm -hmm. and you know i want to make people feel how i feel when i'm making it or like i want people to feel that same energy i feel when the song is getting mixed down and it's all done and i'm hearing it in the studio and like it's just it's just some vibe that just is completely unexplainable but i know it shows and like showing my friends like the songs like or not even my friends it could be anyone i just want every everyone everybody to really feel what i'm feeling when i'm making this stuff and i think i do a good job at um putting my emotion into it and and i don't even mean by emotion like you know putting pain or making sad songs i just mean like energy like, i just want people to feel something and get something out of it whether it's just you know like a, a vibe change like maybe they're having you know you're just having a midday and then you put on one of one of my songs you turn that shit up and fucking well your vibes up you're, you're feeling good the energy's there so i really like people that resonate with my music and enjoy it and to gain something from it and i try to show people 
or tell people through like similes, metaphors, um, you know, any of that stuff, like my personal life by not, but not like talking it, you know, like mm -hmm. making it into a song by making it sound good. Like mm -hmm. that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to like get stuff off my chest, but not trying to bore people or like being like, nah, this ain't the vibe. Like, like I'm trying to make vibes for everything. So mm -hmm. that no matter what you're in tune with one of my songs. So very understandable and with your single ill that you have out there is also a song that speaks on some of those painful struggles that you have gone through and i know you put that song out there with the hopes of encouraging people so like when you put that out there knowing that the subject matter was touching on you know your own personal struggles what was the reactions you was getting from the people that have heard it um one of the um real reactions that i got was my uh my homie luke was in the studio with me at my house when we recorded that and he's the one that like just like because and also i was basically like going i i didn't i had like half the song written and the rest of the song was just like me just punching in just like feeling what i'm feeling like writing like down little bars then going from there on the whiteboard while i'm recording mm -hmm. and he was just pushing me he's like he goes bro like this is something like this is something different and like there was a certain part it's like you gotta like put your like emotion into it like feel it feel it and i just remembered that and that was such a dope feeling and to hear it back i'm like yeah and he goes yes yeah, this was it this was it and um and a lot of people's reactions i think i didn't get as many as reactions as i would hope i did but just because i think people get so not necessarily lost in the music like mm -hmm. it, there's so much to keep up with especially with that song too that's like a four minute track of just me just going and going um that people you know certain th like they might have missed certain things that i said mm -hmm. but um yeah no that song was definitely i was feeling it and had some every single song there's always something i'm saying but that's why i want people to pay attention that's what makes me different lyrics are the most important thing to me so if you're not paying attention to my lyrics don't even bother listening to my songs you know what i'm saying like lyrics are the like what makes people understand what makes people feel what makes people relate it's the words that you're using mm -hmm. so i i really and that's the most important thing to me the bars um you know the subject matter the lines that i'm saying and that's what i've really gotten good at is like speaking my feelings even like how i did on ill i do that even more and way better than i did on ill a few years back on my new album it's going to be incredible so looking forward to that you know that's one thing i'm starting to notice and i know it took me a while to notice you have a lot of artists that we call mumble rappers and we'd say like you know a lot of these cats out here they're not really saying anything when it comes to their music which to an, which to an extent yeah. they don't you know what i'm saying but like you said you said something that just struck you know something with me when you say people are paying attention to the words that they're saying you know people pay attention to the words that you're saying and all that good stuff and it makes me realize a lot of these people really do listen to the words that a lot of these artists are saying whether they mumbling them or not you know what i'm saying like people resonate yeah. with people's struggles people resonate with what they feel as though is relatable music or relatable subject matter to what they may be experiencing yep. right now so it made me see things in a different light you know and ju just now what you just saying that exactly. made me open my eyes up even more so i'm like you know what you got a point there you know people do be listening to what other people are saying that's why they like the music so much exactly and that's where i feel like that's where my fans are at the people that appreciate me for me but not only that with my sound and my um you know different like i'm not just coming on and saying nothing i never am coming on saying nothing and if it is technically nothing it's gonna be all bars and it's gonna make like that's what i want i just want like reactions i want people to be like looking like looking at their friend like what he just say and like or like think to themselves you know what i'm saying like yeah. or you know or if they're driving in the car alone and then they're like oh whoa like wait rewind that you know play that back like that's like that's the type of stuff i'm on so i definitely want people to definitely appreciate or hear out the lyrics more um well i mean people obviously do music that's the people that love me and appreciate my music are the real you know music heads that 
don't just listen to the mumble raps with the with the trap beats that it's like what are they even talking about I mean, yeah some of it's fun it's fun music you know but i'm not necessarily here to have fun life isn't all fun mm-hmm. you know there's a lot of different parts of life that people can relate to and um even in their own perspective if he, if i'm even rapping about like my own life mm-hmm. i know people can relate to it in their own way with what i'm saying like it might be a story completely different but that line that i said matches the same it's the same it's a good comparison to their situation so that's what i really hope for mm-hmm. now with that being music. said when it comes to your music and it comes to your career overall and you feel yourself getting to that point where you're about ready to hang it up and you're ready to just you know either move on to something new move on to a different genre of music or just you know do something different in life what do you want to be able to look back at your career and say that you was able to accomplish and be proud of um definitely there's a lot um i want to be able to definitely i want to be known a lot more you know like i don't necessarily want to be the biggest superstar in the whole world i'm not trying to be drake i'm not trying to be you know jack harlow whoever you know i'm not trying to be anyone like that i'm just trying to be me i'm trying to make a living off my music and i'm trying to do what i love every single day which is excuse me Mm -hmm. making music and um and having people resonate with it and i want to start my own companies um I have my brand and my um, my campaign, basically my music campaign and brand is called Dope Growth, mm. which is also what I came, I came up with uh, in junior junior high geometry class. One day I was just sitting there and I was like, what can like, cause you know, um, kind of like Burner with cookies, like his brand cookies. Mm-hmm. I wanted I wanted to come up with something like that, like where I can make merchandise and you know this fits the vibe and um i call it dope growth and it just stuck with me because i was just at such a young age i wanted to grow like grow as an artist i want people to grow as themselves and whatever they like to do and be different and like you don't have to follow anybody you could see your own shit be yourself and grow on your own and dope growth is like you know just grow you know just be dope and like be yourself and do anything like the people that say you can't do do those things and are like those little secret talents or like those little hobbies that you have that you really like to do but maybe not other people are into them as much no stick to that stick to that one niche stick to that one thing that you're really good at that's why i was saying like i yeah i was good at sports but what was the one thing i was really good at is music and i've been sticking with it so you know um i really want to open my business with dope growth and you know start a clothing line you know maybe even have my own weed one day or (laughs) you know have papers and um you know really make something out of it along with making music and type of thing um which where burner um is a big influence on that and um He's a huge inspiration. Look at him now. He's in Forbes list billionaire. So, you know, small wins. I'm just going to keep taking small wins and keep striving for bigger ones. Um, And it's going to all work out, I think. Absolutely, man. And with that said, man, we want to say thank you, you know, for taking the time out of your busy schedule once again to come up here and rock out with us man we truly do appreciate it this was a dope discussion a dope conversation man we got to know more about you know more about your music and all that good stuff and for people out there that's listening right now that would like to learn more about you even more so you know like to follow you like to you know check out more of your music and even you know maybe bring you onto their show how can they make that possible um so what they can do they can go on twitter Instagram, SoundCloud, YouTube, um, Spotify, Apple Music, all those. Go and look up J Dash F E Double R J Fur, and look me up there. Follow me. Hit me up. Um, let me know you listen to the interview, and uh, we'll chop it up. And hopefully, you get to become another new fan of mine. And uh, really appreciate what I'm trying to do for not only myself but 
just the music game in general. I want to change it, and I want to show kids, you know, growing up that were like me, hiding their hiding their little、uh, secret talent. <laughs> I want them to come out and do the same.、Mm, no doubt about so, that. So yeah, follow me on all, follow me on all the socials. And wait, I have one more thing to say. I, I kind of want to name drop my album. I haven't name dropped it yet.、Okay. The title. Oh shit! So we getting a little bit of exclusive, a little preview here on the show. Yeah, I appreciate we, that. <laughs>、uh, oh, of course, of course, bro. I had to do it for you, Amilo. Come hey, on, man, I appreciate that. <laughs> All right. So I haven't said the album title yet because I wanted to, you know, hold back till it was almost ready, and it's almost so close to being ready.、Um, just a few things we got to get in order before it drops. But、um, it's going to be called People. People. And people, yes, as in like you know, you look through the hotel room, you know.、Yeah. Um, but、um, no, so the meaning behind people is it's kind of like I've been kind of quiet for the past two years during COVID, working on this album, and no one's really known what I've been up to, and a lot of my personal life has changed. And、um, the people is kind of this album. I want the listeners looking through the people. You know, to see what's really been going on in my life,、um, what's been going on the past few years, and what's changed, and、um, all the growth, the ups, downs, all different changes, and、um, and I want, and also it's a peephole for me looking on the outside to seeing who's watching me, and、um, and whoever's eyes are, I'm gonna deliver, and it's gonna be something that whoever's heard my music before, it's gonna be. A lot bigger than you think, so I'm looking forward to that. I'm glad I got the name drop. That only the real ones listening to this interview are gonna know that until I <laughs> drop it on social. There it go, ladies and gentlemen. We got that exclusive drop called Peephole right there. That's what y'all looking forward to going into 2023. Coming from my man Jay Fur, man. Much love to you, brother. We definitely do appreciate it, man. One more thing, man. Yo, do me a favor. Yup. Burn that goddamn Celtics. I mean, not Celtics. That goddamn Red Sox jersey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you want me to burn the Celtics jerseys too? I got a few. Yeah, burn those too, you man. To, you, I'm yo, gonna have to send you a Knicks、yeah. jersey or something like that. Now I'm messing with you yo, so long. Yo, I, I know. I, yo, I know you probably want me to burn that Tatum jersey right now. Oh man, Tatum is nice, yo. I kind of he's one of those players. I、yeah. really wish that you know during that draft process we had that pick. To get him because he's definitely、uh, one of the ones that when I was watching, you know, the draft process and everything leading up to that year, I'm like, yo, it would be dope、yeah. to have him on the squad because, like, <laughs> I know he's going to be a star, man. So I'm kind of hating on the low, but it's all love, you know. Yeah. I mean? <laughs> yo, hey, nah, nah, it's all good. You guys resign Joe Judge. You're good. You're good. Relax. relax. Nah, nah, nah. I mean, <laughs> hey, man, I'm not a.、Hey, I don't feel too bad about my Knicks. You know, we are in a transitional <laughs> period. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, we got Jalen Brunson. Back, back. That's a good little cornerstone right there. We got R.J. Barrett. Even though、uh-huh. a lot of people are hating on R.J. right now, we got a nice little squad, man. It just needs some time to get together. No, you, guys, you know, got some continuity and all that. Yeah, for sure, for sure.、Mm-hmm. All right, bro. Well, I appreciate you having me on. Much love、yeah. to everybody listening, and much love to you, bro.、No、you、doubt. have a good night, Amilo. We'll chop it up again, maybe after the album drops. No doubt, man. Definitely keep me in tune and let me know when it's coming out. Then and everybody else out there that's tuned in and listening right now, be sure to keep it locked and stay tuned because we'll be back with much more right after this. Look. Everywhere I go, they always see some bars from me.、Yeah. It's never written. It's honestly too hard to read.、Okay. It's hard to see. I'm fucked up and it's hard to speak. Got him and Ella Burst. Shit is like some carpentry. Picture that. Now it's just photography. She taking daily vitamins. All she does is swallow me. The flavor that she likes is she suck it up like copper weed. I'ma let her ride it till she turn blue and it's hard to breathe. Hot haters, I'm higher than skyscrapers. My eyes look half Asian. Make the ladies' hips swing like lightsabers. It's food for thought. Don't mind my mind caters and I drop. Shit harder than blind waiters. Middle fingers up for haters. That's sign language. Keep liquor in my cup and weed on my lungs faded. I'm the plug for pussy. No need for the vibrators. Y'all know the taste, but here's a little more flavor. Yeah, it's the flavor in your ear. Flavor in the ear. It's the flavor in your ear. Yeah, it's the flavor in your ear. It's the flavor in your ear. Got the flavor in your ear. Little bit of this, little bit of that. Little bit of this, little bit of rap. 
School these MCs like a bunch of kindergarten kids Get these rappers shaking like they died No some Parkinson's I'm too ill Have you seen like the pollen is? Check myself in a minute clinic with the pharmacist Spitting space bars Hear it from a Martian bitch Geeking like the school band How we always marching